one of my sports teachers, she went around and told some of my friends at that time that I was gay. That put me way back into the closet. Yeah. Kids would always say in school, make maybe a, a racist joke. And they'd be like, oh, don't worry, you're not really Asian. It made you feel like being Asian was not acceptable, as well as being gay. I wanted to hide my Asianness, hide my gayness. You live in an amazing city, in an amazing apartment. You're openly gay with your partner. Like if I was 18, I look at John, I'd be like, damn, that's what I want my life to be. So I know you've gone through a lot to get here. And if people saw your life now, they don't appreciate the struggles that you've been through. That's what I want to share to everyone else today. And hopefully you can help to inspire someone else by sharing your journey. I was adopted, born in Korea, adopted when I was about three months old. My mom is Australian and my dad is Scottish. And my sister was born in the Philippines. She was adopted as well. So I grew up in a white family, um, white primary school white high school and always felt culturally Australian growing up. But I think like now that I've met a lot of Asians, I feel very mixed. I feel like culturally Australian and Asian. How old were you when you kind of figured out you were gay? Oh, I was like gay as soon as I came out of the womb. So, like, I always knew that I was gay. I have a gay aunt as well. I always knew what being gay was. I always yeah. had a word for it. She is very successful. So I always had a kind of role model to look up to. And then at what age did you start having to tell people? In high school, it started getting questioned. Probably year nine. At that time, people were starting to question it and I was very uncomfortable about being openly gay. So I was very much in the closet. One of my sports teachers, who was mid-20s, cool, liked to be kind of friends with the students, she went around and told some of my friends at that time that I was gay. And yeah. they came to me and I was like, that put me way back into the closet. How did yeah. you find out that she... My friend told me. Wow. Yeah. So That's she... insane. I wonder if she realizes the impact that it has on someone who's struggling with their identity and uncomfortable with it. If you're already feeling that way and then someone kind of calls you out, it just makes you feel even more vulnerable, even more uncomfortable. Exactly. Yeah. And growing up around that age, was being a still perceived as a very negative thing? In my head, it, it was bad, but I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I think... High school kids are mean. You don't want to stand out ever. And yeah. being gay just makes you stand out for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And growing up, what do you think made you think that being gay was bad? I think it was just wanting to fit into being normal. I was already Asian in a white school. So I think being gay was, was different. So that was the first incident about being gay where you were outed. You went back into the closet. And then when did you start coming out again, having the courage to do that? It took me like until early 20s to like come out to my friends, family. And it was a very slow, gradual process. I only like told a handful of people and then I just gradually told one person up for the other. When you entered the workforce as a lawyer, were you openly gay then? Absolutely not. There's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say trauma. That I feel like that's too strong a word, but, but that feeling of telling people that you're gay brings even now a little bit of panic and fear because you feel like maybe the people are going to reject you. Yeah. So particularly in the workforce where you don't know how people are going to respond to it, react to it, and these people kind of have your career in their hands, it just creates a lot of fear and you yeah. don't know how, yeah, how it's going to be perceived. I feel like you're balancing on one hand your professional development and like the furtherment of your career, but at the same time it's your self-identity which you value and how did you juggle that? I think at the end of the day, you know, have to value yourself and being a gay doesn't define me, but it's a big part of me. You don't want to feel like you can't share that part of yourself. And if you are in a workplace that you can't do that, and they, I mean, we're lucky we're in Australia. Um, we're in a time where being gay is accepted and there are definitely um, corporations, companies, workplaces that do accept it and value it. So for me, if I can't find a job that would accept that, it's not a job that I want to be working yeah. in. How were their reactions when you told them? This is the thing. Whenever I've come out, no one's really ever given a bad reaction. A lot of it's probably internalized. and has been good, good about it. But I think the other thing is you've probably been careful about who you've yes. told, right? So you've kind of self-filtered the people that you think are the least likely to reject. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Tell the people that I trust mm. and just slowly build my confidence in that respect and then 
at the end of the day, if the other people don't accept me, who cares? If you're the person that someone comes out to, and how you react has such a profound impact on that person's life. And I think a lot of people maybe don't appreciate that. Yeah, I think definitely, especially when it's that first phase of coming out, it would be nice if people understood how hard that is for people um, and how much insecurity people build as they grow up. And so when you harbor that all through your life and then you go to tell someone that you're gay, you're kind of exposing something that you feel like is really big. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is potentially going to change how they interact with you, what they think of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe. Subscribe. And how did your parents react when you told them? How old were you? My mum was amazing. I broke up with one of my boyfriends and I was, you know, just at home and she came in and I, I told her and kind of, you know, broke down crying and she just hugged me. She didn't even like respond about and me being gay specifically. She was just there for me because I was hurting. Yeah. Um, and I think my mom and dad always knew that I was gay. And so it wasn't really a shock. Yeah. Like, and, and then being adopted and obviously being raised, knowing you're different, and then also having to go through the process of being gay, do you think there's anything special that you had to overcome? Kids would always say in school, make maybe a, a racist joke, and they'd be like, oh, don't worry, you're not really Asian. It made you feel like being Asian was less than or and not acceptable as well as being gay i wanted to kind of hide my asianness hide my gayness until yeah. i realized being asian is amazing as well yeah and then going back to work when you were still not out and trying to further your professional career did you have to make any decisions sacrifices from a personal self-identity perspective in order to progress your career as you find your own identity in life i think you also have to find your identity in work and that also takes time to find confidence in who you are at work and be firm in that. And I, I think that's probably ongoing. What you've said is very applicable to probably a lot of people. They might not realize that you can hold multiple identities and you don't necessarily need to be the same person in every space. Yeah. I mean, it's not that you're not being authentic to who you are, but I think when you're at work, there are different situations, like you're dealing with different things. And how open would you say you are about your personal life? your work colleagues for me personally i think you you have to have a level of professionalism at work um but at the same time you outwork the majority of your life yeah. so it's nice to find friends at work um otherwise yeah you're kind of wasting your life away with people that you don't kind of enjoy being around if you had to give advice to a younger gay person who's maybe in high school they're struggling with their identity they think being gay is not a good thing any words of wisdom know that you will find a path through and you will make it out the other side and it'll make you stronger at the end of the day. Look at it as a journey, trying to enjoy the ride as much as you can. Find your supporters in life as well. You know, like if you feel like someone isn't going to accept you being gay, then they're not people that you want in your life. And obviously there's challenges around family. So I'm not saying reject your family, but Definitely find the people that support you in life and who will accept you for you. What you said, life is a journey. So one of the reflections that I had yesterday, change in life only comes through difficult circumstances and you only grow when you've had challenge and like, you've faced difficulties. Oh. So being gay, we often face a lot of struggles that other people don't have to face, but also in a strange way, it's a blessing because you experience so much more than anyone else has. And as a result, your character grows probably more than other people. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like you often realize you've grown the most when you've experienced a challenge in life. It's a real opportunity for you to understand who you are. Without those challenges, you wouldn't be where you are now. What's the best part do you think about being gay? I think we have a real community that for the most part lifts each other up. Uh, and I think everyone is looking for their tribe and where they fit in. I think. Growing up, I never felt like I particularly fit in with my friends at school. Um, but now I found the real kind of family that supports me and lifts me up. And I think that's really valuable. Honestly, I haven't seen that anywhere else. It's just the strength of community and willingness to help each other because you know how difficult the journey has been. And yeah, that's really special. Being diagnosed with ADHD, like you were diagnosed late in life. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you've gone through this process of coming to terms with being gay. And then suddenly now you have ADHD and you almost had to come out a second time. What had that kind of been like for you? I mean, everyone's been supportive. I don't think people necessarily 
have believed that I have ADHD. So it's kind of you know, that thing of, oh, yeah, that's nice, but not truly believing that. Yeah, yeah, you don't look like you have it. Yeah. You're too um, put together. You're too calm. Yeah. And also, you know, I have had a good career. And so people can't conceptually marry the two things together. Yes. We can talk about it. We really understand what each other goes go yes. through. And I think at the end of the day, maybe it's not so important if other people don't fully get that. People understand what they've gone through in life. And I'm not expecting them to understand something that they have not necessarily gone through. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I try to explain the fact that you're gay or that you have ADHD to people who don't believe or can't empathize. It's so difficult. So sometimes spending that energy is not necessarily worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's it. High five, bestie. Yeah.